What's up guys? This is Kyle Jones with Jones Sport Fishing and today is Tuesday, September 19th. It's been a while since I've done a report. I know they're overdue, um, but here you go. Here is gonna be our weekly report from uh, the Clearwater and Snake Confluence. That's where we've been spending most of our time lately and uh, fishing's been really good. Um, but before that, I just wanted to let everybody know it's uh, awesome the support that we're getting. Our channel just hit 4,000 subscribers today. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And guys, um, please make sure that if you want to be able to go back and look at previous videos and watch our reports and there's some patterns that you can see start to develop in, in like say that Astoria fishery and stuff. You need to make sure that you're subscribed to that YouTube channel because that'll give you access to easily find all of those videos. If you're just watching this on Facebook or TikTok, um, it's a little bit, it's harder to find videos and to find all that information. So head on over to YouTube and subscribe and uh, yeah. But um, anyway, let's get to it. So. Last week, I started out early in the week trolling. We've been fishing three different setups, so I'm gonna kind of break down what happened. So I started out trolling, and the first day I jumped out trolling on Monday or on Tuesday, um, I hooked like 15 or 16 fish, but we only landed two, which has been a very, very common problem for me in this fishery on the troll. And it's something that's frustrated me in the past, and I've always been you know, there's gotta be a better, better way, gotta be a better way, change my hook setups, yada, yada, change to mono. And in this spot, for whatever reason, it just doesn't help. These fish, they're a little bit lazy when they bite and they just, they really shake their head behind the boat and we lose a ton of them. So fast forward to Wednesday and I decided, hey, I had, I had a group, awesome group. They fished with me a few times and I said, hey guys, let's try something. Um, I bet we can get more than two fish, but at least we can do as good as we did the day before. So we jumped out there and uh, started hover fishing eggs and it was absolutely lights out. The hover fishing was fantastic. So we hover fished Wednesday and Thursday, did awesome. And then on Friday, I had a group of kids and then my son Henry came along and I was really kind of worried about them being able to set the hooks and to feel the bite and to do the things needed to do to like stay engaged enough when you're hover fishing. Cause when you're hover fishing, you gotta be focused. Like we are totally paying attention the entire time cause the bite is really light. It's kind of like a tap pop and they pull down real light. And so you gotta be ready to set the hook. And I thought, man, these kids just aren't gonna be able to do it. So I, I pulled out my bobber rods and I set my bobbers to like 22 feet so that when my leaders, or 21 feet so that when my leaders were hanging down, my 30 inch or so, my 36 inch leaders were hanging down, they were fishing right about 23 to 24 feet. And I'm telling you, like, I wasn't sure if that was gonna work. I've, you know, I've thought about it. Guys fish bobbers here all the time. They catch some Chinook, not a ton, but most of them are anchored and they're letting them out in the current. And so they're just sitting there and their gear's kind of blowing back. So I thought, you know, if we just drifted with these, it's gonna be just like hover fishing with an indicator. And oh my gosh, it was absolutely incredible. These kids were hooking fish left and right. We ended up killing 12 and I had three kids in there under 10. And then their dad and I were hover fishing and the kids were out fishing us. And so we ended up fishing all bobbers for the rest of the day. It was pretty amazing. And then so took the weekend off and jumped back out here on Monday and bam. It was amazing again with the bobbers and then um, and then today happened. And so this is kind of the, the thing that is pretty cool about just being out here every day. Today, the bite was much slower. I will say that um, there were boats, there were some boats right off the bat that were catching fish trolling. And I know there's been some questions about whether we're starting trolling in the morning and then switching to hover fishing. I'm just hover fishing right off the bat at the get go. That first couple hours of light is the best bite period whether you're trolling or if you're hover fishing so i don't i don't want to waste that time frame i can when we're catching fish hover fishing i can get them faster than any other method i don't have to redeploy all that gear guys can keep fishing a lot of time we don't even hardly have to reel up it's just boom 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 we can be effective so um today came out with my bobber program and was getting bites but they just were not sticking and so 
um, and Barry hover fished. And so we had a pretty slow day. We ended up with three, which I was happy with. Barry ended up with seven. He had four guys that were on the ball hover fishing and they were able to really search around and kind of find different depths where I'm kind of locked in. It's not as easy to switch depths and to control all that when you're bobber fishing. So I feel like if the fish are being aggressive and I watch, I can watch them on my live scope come off of the bottom and up three, four, five, six, seven feet sometimes to grab those eggs. So there is a time when they are like egg craving and grabbing stuff. And when they're doing that, the bobber fishing is amazing, but they don't always do that. And so I really think that um, the versatility of hover fishing day in, day out, if you've got a crew that's, that can, that could do it and can pay attention and lock in, um, is probably going to be the best bet moving forward. And then, um, so hover fishing, it's critical. So we dropped to the, the, the biggest thing is that you wanna try to maintain your, your drift and keep your boat pretty much vertical on top of your gear the entire time. So we're running three and four ounce leads and we're fishing straight up and down. And so what we're doing is we're dropping to the bottom and then coming up three full cranks on the reel handle. And that's putting us in that couple of feet off bottom. I can see it in my gear. A couple foot off bottom is where is where my gear's floating at. And we're just, I'm using my bow mount, Barry's not. You can do this with a kicker motor. Um, really just trying to keep those lines vertical. We are drifting and covering water. I think that's key. There's a lot of guys, and I know it's the way guys have fished a ton in the past, in, is like sitting on anchor and just bobber fishing. And while I know that could be effective, the, you're gonna be much more effective if you're drifting and covering water. I mean, I'll make a couple of passes and then I'll move out, I'll move in. I mean, my, my baits are going by so many fish in a day that we're bound to find some fish that wanna play. So. Those are, those are some tips for me. Um, here, let me, uh, I'm gonna flip this camera around, guys, and I'm gonna show you uh, these hover fishing and bobber fishing setups so that you guys can have an idea if you're wanting to do this on your own. So, hold on. All right, first things first here. This is my bobber setup, and I think a lot of this stuff's pretty critical. So, I'm running a pretty small float. This is a quarter ounce. Aero float. I just grabbed these. I don't know that the exact float style matters, but I do know that the way that you set it up is. So that's a quarter ounce float, which means that that float's designed to float a quarter ounce jig or a quarter ounce weight and have it up here at the yellow part. Well, I went and put a half ounce um, bobber type trolling sinker on there. And so half ounce on that quarter ounce float with a big corky my, my floats are riding barely with that orange part up. So I think that's really, really critical because that allows those fish to come up and they barely bite it. These, these bobbers aren't going down like you would think, um, like drifting steelhead floats in faster current where the bobber just buries. They are slowly slipping down underwater and any resistance, those fish will just drop it and let it go. So having a small float like that, that's weighted really sensitive is critical. And so on my setup, I just came down, I've got 36 inches of leader and I'm seriously just running my, um, though that is my side drifting steelhead egg setup. And so that's a 10 pound leader. So this whole setup, this is fairly light. So it's a ton of fun to fight these fish on this setup. So fairly light leader, 10 pound leader, down to two number four hooks. Um, so that has been my bobber setup. Like I said, I've been setting my float at about 21 feet, which on a 10 and a half foot rod, I do the length of the rod twice and call it good. So next up, I'll show you guys the hover setup. Anyway guys, I hope that's really helpful. I hope that'll get some of you guys to catch some fish. And uh, it's super fun to be out here and like, I've always thought that there's gotta be more ways to catch these fish than just trolling. Trolling's great. And if you love the troll and that's your program, there's so much room out here. Keep trolling, trolling around. You guys gotta remember like when we're drifting, our gear's right under our boat. So just steer around us a little bit and it's not it's not that big of a deal. I had some guy get his panties in a wad today cause he doesn't like that I'm hover fishing in here now, but you know, whatever. So things change, things move on, different techniques show up. Um, if you love trolling, there is so much room to troll. Nobody is taking over. There's plenty of room. You guys, we're all just trying to have fun and catch fish different ways. I love having a rod in my hand, feeling the fish bite, setting the hook, and getting to catch fish. 
if what you love to do is troll around with a downrigger and stair rod that doesn't move and just pull it out of there when it comes off the clip, then go for it. Um, that's, uh, that's totally cool. I don't have any problem with that. Um, so yeah, but that's just, that's just a little of a side take. So, um, anyway, guys, I hope all that helped. I hope some of you guys can, that can help some of you guys. I know I've been promising to do it. So I really appreciate you guys watching. This one's long, but I promise that it'd be worth the wait and there'd be some good information here. So guys, anyway, Hey, if you are wanting to get out and fish with us, we are pretty much booked until October, the middle of October. So from now until October 14th, we're able to keep salmon and steelhead in both the clear water and the snake. And then October 14th on, or if the 15th, the clear water closes for, for steelhead, but it's still open for catch and release and it closes for Chinook, but it's still open for coho. So there's kind of some cool options that we can do and keep fishing. So, and then there's also the snake. So the Heller bar stretch, all that's gonna get a killer run. And uh, man, a mid-October day, pulling plugs or drifting at, uh, on, up on the snake is just an incredibly incredible time to fish. So guys, we're pretty much full through the 14th of October, but hey, if you guys are wanting to get in on steelhead and we got an amazing steelhead run coming and lots of big B run fish, now is the time to book, especially like we are really tight on weekend days and hopefully we're gonna be able to offer some more days here pretty quick, but um, don't wait, give us a call, get those trips booked and uh, yeah. We'll see you guys on the water and God bless as always. Um, and just thank you guys so much for the, for the support. It means the world. Anyway, God bless. Talk to you guys later.